Hi there, my name is Ladrin Bex and I'm a therapist a facilitator uh, using light and sound. Um, talking about light and sound, um, sleep is very important. Um, sleep involves um, wavelengths, it involves, involves frequencies that our brain uh, naturally gets into at certain rhythms. So the past uh, few years I've been uh, working, uh, especially through the pandemic, uh, different shifts being very um, waking up very early uh, and doing driving jobs and you know having to, to work <laughs> a, a, a job rather than facilitating because I couldn't see anybody I couldn't have clients I couldn't do retreats so in that time I've learned a lot about sleep um, because I was trying to get to sleep early for being up very early um, ridiculous hours um, so I've been my own guinea pig here um, but one person that really helped me through through this and understanding more about better quality sleep was a friend of mine, Lance Carter, who's written the Better Sleep series. Uh, I think it's in four parts on the Roxiva website. So this uh, video is is based on my own experience, um, reading those articles, applying my own research, my own things that work for me, and um, yeah, there's a lot to know about sleep we, we don't realise. So let's take, for example, my situation of um, having, you know, being a person that finds it very difficult to get to sleep when it's when it's light. Um, it could be six or seven or eight o'clock in the evening, especially on summertime where it's already light outside and then get up very early. So unfortunately, I've had that pleasure, but I'm, I'm glad because it taught me a, it's taught me a lot. So um, let's first start off with the role of sleep you know, of light and sleep patterns. We need natural light in our lives to help us with our circadian rhythm, our natural body clock, that, you know, we should have a certain amount of daylight hours in our day to keep our brain functioning, our body functioning. Um, without the presence of light, all sorts of problems can happen. We can have problems with depression, sadness. We're not getting proper um, serotonin boosts, uh, which, you know, help us feel good and maintain our bodily rhythms in, with us. Um, sunlight is important as well, especially all parts of our body, to absorb um, vitamin C, which also helps to, to absorb vitamin D in our, in our body, which helps with bones, and also our immunity. Um, and also with the absence of light throughout the day, um, in the evening, we, we start to produce uh, melatonin, which is a natural uh, hormone released in our brain to help us sleep at night. So with um, Basically, uh, natural light is your best friend during the day. However, at night, uh, light, artificial light isn't good. And I'm not talking about light machines. Light machines are fine, but it's more so the blue peak that is found on screens, the, the, the blue that is there on phones, um, tablets, it could be TV screens, computer screens. Anything that's an LED light has some sort of blue ambience light to it. And that's not good for uh, our sleep you know, cycles, basically. Um, so if you're having problems sleeping, uh, keep watching, because um, there's lots to cover in this video. Um, it can go very deep, but there's more information on the Roxiva website under uh, the Better Sleep series, which has helped me loads. But I want to talk about my own experiences here. So um, looking at your bedroom surroundings, that's an important thing because it's like where you sleep, you know, your surroundings, your environment, like what's there, like how quiet it is, how light it is. And being in a work environment where I've been with many other colleagues um, who don't understand all this stuff, that they're going to bed with their eyes shut and the room is as light as this, you know, and they've got their curtains closed, but they haven't got proper blackout curtains and they're having problems sleeping and they don't know why. So for the whole summer, I black out my bedroom. Um, that's one important thing that I do. If you are having shift work and you want to sleep, then any ab any presence of light in the room can really affect your your the quality of your sleep. Um, so your bedroom environment, basically, um, making sure that there's no lamps on, um, you don't have electricity in the room, the the frequencies from phones can keep you awake. But you know, if you have to have your phone you know, with you, like charging, put it at the other end of the bedroom, or turn your phone off. A lot of people don't turn their phones off. They wonder why they can't sleep because they have 
have you know the electricity pulsing through the phone as well as um, you know frequency there all, all night. It, it can have a big effect for people who are very sensitive as well. That can you know be a very down effect on on your sleep. Um, again, your environment. Make sure that your room is for sleep only. If you don't have that uh, that that quality in your life to have your room just for sleep, maybe you are a student or you're living in a flat or a studio flat somewhere where there is stuff everywhere or you're living in a situation where you have to work in your bedroom then separate your work corners like what I did in London when I was there is that I had a big cupboard and I took everything out and I put my laptop in there so at the end of the day I could just close the cupboard up and my bedroom was just the bed and the cupboard and a chair and that was it basically and that worked really well because before I had a desk in there and I found it really a big problem to to sleep properly. I kept waking up because my, you know, my laptop was out. Although it was shut, it was just it was still in a work environment. So although I was working in there, I was able to shut the door at the end of the day. So change things around. Put a curtain there so you can divide your bedroom to something else. Um, so it's the same if you live in a camper van or you know you go camping. It's having that sleeping quarters completely separate that you don't you know you're not having all your stuff. It's like would you really take all your work, like homework or your work papers and put them on your bed next to you to, to wake up next to? You know, it's <laughs> would you as like a carpenter take all your tools and just put them on the bed and sleep next to it? You wouldn't because it's keeping those different realities separate. So keep your bedroom for sleeping only. Um, that's what I do. The only thing I have in my bedroom is is a lamp. I have some drawers with few bits of things in there that I, I need uh, could be some tissues it could be some some water throughout the night um, and I have one chest of drawers and that's it I just me and my bed and the less in there the better you're gonna have much better quality sleep um, try and turn everything off if you can if there's any lights turn it off if anything you know especially if you can turn the Wi-Fi or the internet off at night perfect if you can't then there are ways if you're having problems sleeping, try and change the uh, frequency output from 24 kilohertz down to five kilohertz or something, that can be done. That was something, a post that went up on Facebook the other day. A uh, Facebook friend that I know of was having problems sleeping because of the, the Wi-Fi being on and some people can roll his eyes up, up to that and think people are crazy, but it can affect certain people. So you can change the frequency downput to that. Um, so yeah, bedroom, bedroom surroundings and stuff. The only thing that I have in there that helps me to sleep is a grounding sheet, which you can um, get from a company called Groundology, I think it is, where it's basically a big sheet that has silver woven into it, very finely silver. It doesn't, you know, doesn't um, abrase you or scratch you or anything. It's very soft. And in there is a, an anchor point where you plug it into your wall socket um, so basically on an English socket you have the top one which has been the earth and the bottom two the positive and the negative like the neutral and the you know the power and the negative basically those two are plastic on the plug and the top one is metal so when you plug that plug into the socket of your wall you're basically connected to the whole grounding system the earthing system so if you're in a flat this works well for me I didn't plug it into a socket um, well I did but then I, I had an empty socket an old one and I had some really heavy duty wire. I put it to an actual heavy, um, a meter long copper rod, which I stuck into the ground outside my, my, my bedroom window, basically. I live out here in the country, so I just stuck a wire outside the window, which you can't see. And that's connected straight to my earthing grounding sheet. Uh, I noticed some difference. Uh, it, helps with, um, it helps with DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. Um, which is uh, an issue of like lactic acid building up. They did this scientific study with jet pilots um, grounding them at night to see any difference, and um, the lack of uh, fatigue was, um, you know, well, fatigue was gone. And also in, in muscle soreness, um, there wasn't so much lactic acid build up. So there is some great results in grounding, so an earthing sheet. So I sleep on that every night. But to be honest, what I found is that you don't need the whole sheet. You know, your your feet is what's mostly important to ground you. Um, so you only really need like a sheet, maybe this wide at the end of your bed, just where you put your feet. 
Or you can have the sheet put over you and your hands and then your legs, you know, are touching it. And if you sleep with less clothes on, even better. You know, you have direct contact with those natural um, ions in, in the ground, the earth, the earth frequency, the, the Schumann resonance, I guess, you know, plugged directly into the pulse of the earth. Look all this up. There's lots of scientific studies on grounding which are really, really helpful. Um, so another thing for, for, for the bedroom is make sure that you have a comfortable bed as well, you know, like good, good comfortable mattress, pillows. Um, for me, I don't like to have my head too high. I've, I, I'm vegan, but I love natural materials, so I've got um, a feathered down a duvet. I find it a lot more comfortable, the same as the pillows. Unfortunately, I'm sorry those are out there who are vegan and understand, you know, that it's not perhaps vegan. I'm a different type of vegan that I eat plant-based foods, but I don't wear leathers, but there are things like cotton which I wear, which are, you know, from animals, um, silks that I wear, um, as well as other plant-based sort of like um, a clothing that I wear. We all wear wool, you know, it's from an animal. And it's the same with, with my bedding. My bedding is filled with the quilt, the duvet, the pillows, is has got, um, I think, duck feathers, goose down, I think it is. I find it a lot more comfortable. It's man it's manable, it's a bit more heavier. I find it a lot more comfortable. Um, I find that to get better sleep for me, I put, I've got these V-shaped cushions. So um, I, I prop them up behind me in my bed if I'm meditating or I'm sitting upright before I fall asleep. I'll get into that later. But I find that at the end, I put those V cushions on top of me on top of the duvet and what that gives is a bit of more of a weighted feeling feeling like you're 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 there you're tucked in I find that bit more weight on my body a lot more helpful and you can buy weighted blankets but you don't need to you know you can put just pillows big pillows over your body at night they may fall off onto the floor you have to deal with that I have to sometimes sometimes they fall on the floor sometimes they fall on the bed you know next to me that the same bed they fall on the bed and you like wake up in the morning and they're there on the left sometimes they've one on the floor but during that time getting to sleep i find that that pressure that weight is not too heavy but it's enough to make me feel comforted and i find that's what i need um if you look at one of my other videos about the five love, langu love, lang love languages uh physical touch you know it's important it's like quality time those those things make me feel a bit more secure as i fall asleep um Sleeping positions. So whatever position works for you that you get into that works for you. For me, I learned to sleep on my back at a very early age because I was very aware of posture. So I don't ever sleep on my side. I find it very, very awkward unless I have an injury, for example, or um, I don't know, it just depends what's going on um, in the room. If, there's, if I'm in a different place sleeping and I don't know, there's some lights, I just need to turn away from it. Um, so I find that being on my back is is more comfortable. And it's not just being about being on my back and my legs straight. Sometimes I have one leg bent. I find that a bit more, more comfortable. And I put my hands on my body and I just lay there and send myself healing. <laughs> That's how I start my, my nighttime routine of, of falling asleep, basically, when I'm in bed. Uh, I do that and I find it very, very helpful. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's bedtime. Also, I use an eye mask, um, especially if it's a little bit light, sometimes not. Again, it's a bit of the comfort. I actually know two people, uh, in my life, um, who actually put a flannel or like a tea towel over their, over their eyes as they fall asleep. They find that that weightedness, putting in darkness as they fall asleep, very, very powerful. Those two people are together and... I don't know, it was just some sort of quintessence why, you know, why, but um, I remember they opened up to me and said, oh yeah, we both sleep with uh, <laughs> basically towels over our eyes. I'm like, oh, okay, you've always done that? And they're like, yeah, we've got lots in common. Interesting. So I, I learned about that in needs that if I don't, if I'm somewhere, sometimes I travel a lot and so I can be in many different places like hotels and sometimes I can fit, forget my eye mask. I don't know how to be actually one with me but a comfortable eye mask that has the eyes eye holes cut out for your eyes to to move and to breathe it's not good to wear them all the time um because you know you can have dried out eyes and stuff but get ones that allow uh, air circulation 
in there, but try not to use it as much as you can. It's best to black out your room. That's that's what I do. Um, also for sleep, I, I usually sometimes um, sleep with headphones on with some with some music, some uh, binaural beats, uh, one track just in the beginning of my like sleep. Um, I was listening to stuff all throughout the night, but I found that I kept waking up every so often, which wasn't really good. I think the sleep cycles, we, we dream and we, we sleep in 90 minute cycles, an hour and a half. So um, I think I was just waking up every hour and a half. And, you know, because w we go through peaks of delta and a, and a bit of theta. And I think I was being forced so much to be in a delta state using uh, binaural beats that I kept waking up for some no reason. So now I try and sleep throughout the whole night. Um, so things to avoid before you, you go to sleep. So it's important not to go to sleep on a very heavy stomach. Like it's important to sleep, um, to eat two hours before you sleep. So having a decent meal and then not eating much before you sleep basically. So if you have to have a snack, if you're hungry, it's fine to have a little bit, like a handful, um, like half an hour, 20 minutes before, really an hour or 45 minutes is, is better. Between 45 minutes and an hour is best time if you really that late to eat something is to have something small just to fill the, the gap of hunger otherwise you'll be going to bed and feeling you know hunger feelings for some people hunger cravings um, but try and minimize that as best you can um, at least 45 minutes or an hour before or half an hour um, have a herbal tea this is what I do if I'm working the next day early or I have to get up early for traveling going to events um, is I have a herbal tea and I've experimented the last two years on many different herbal teas. I've chucked in a load of different things like um, valerian, I've put in chamomile, hops, um, passion flower, all sorts of things. And I found that three ingredients have worked well for me. A big heaped tablespoon of chamomile flowers, I found that worked really well. With um, one third of a tablespoon of, of lavender flowers. And then one one eighth of a tea tablespoon, I just have a tablespoon at a time, so that's what I measure, of uh, valerian uh, root. So I put this all into a, a mug with a filter, um, which a friend got me, and I let it sit there for a good four or five minutes. That's a good time for a tea to seep. You don't, it's not about qu quantity. I learned this with my master herbalist course. It's not about if you think that, oh, I want to sleep really deep, I'm going to have a lot of one um, herb, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes less is sometimes better. So that's what I use. Um, have a hot tea and I fill up my mug halfway with hot water, let that seep, and then I fill up with, with cold just because I don't like really hot teas. I, I'm com more comfortable with it, more hot, but not so boiling. I can just drink it straight away. I find that really good. And also take some um, capsules of reishi powder. Um, reishi is known to help with uh, the sleep cycles better. Um, as well as putting in there um, a tablespoon of or teaspoon of uh, glycine, uh, L-glycine, which is an amino acid. It's quite sweet to the taste. It's a bit like sugar, but not so sweet. It's very interesting, but that's a... I can't remember, you have to read to the um, sleep um, series article on Roxiva, um, which, which Lance Carter wrote about uh, L-glycine, but I know that it helps with uh, sleep and sleeping deeper. Um, so I use those um, five things now, which help me really well. So lavender, chamomile, valerian, um, and I do this when I have to get up early, just to help me to sleep much deeper and faster, basically. Take some reishi powder, and then, um, yeah, some L-glycine mixed in with the herbal tea. And I top it up with some cold water and I just drink it straight away. Sometimes after a little bit, I have a little bit of like bread, rye bread and spelt bread. Um, a little bit of carbs. Just a little bit of carbs before bed. Um, seems to help me, really. I can't remember where I read that somewhere. Um, but a little bit of carbs helps you to sleep. You burn, you burn energy when you sleep. So it's not like you can sleep lots and you're going to lose weight. It's just you burn the carbs that you've had in that day to help you sleep. Um, when I've done fasting before, I found it very difficult to sleep or I haven't slept much as I wanted. So 
I imagined having a um, a week long fast once, and I thought that I wasn't going to drink, um, so I wasn't going to eat anything. I was just going to sleep lots, but it didn't really work well for me. Everybody is completely different. Another thing is is water. Water, especially spring or filtered water, is the best. Making sure that you are hydrated. Make sure that you have um, some water with you throughout the night. That's just there. Don't drink cups and cups of it. It's enough to just wet your palate, um, wet your 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 throat, um, just so you're you're keeping hydrated throughout the night. Um, another thing about your bedroom as well and sleeping is making sure that you're not in a hot room. Like cool is better because when you're under the sheets, under the blankets and stuff, your body temperature drops, but it tests uh, studies have shown that we sleep better in much cooler environments and i find that much better myself i live in a cob house uh, so cob walls they're, they're quite thick walls so it keeps quite cool all year round so i have no trouble um basically uh sl sleeping i don't find it too hot in the summer it's, it's perfect make sure i've always got a bit of a, the window open all year round and in the winter i have it open just a very small amount and that helps me to uh, just have some fresh air in there basically, especially when I black out my bedroom in the summer I find that having some airflow is very very important um, So what I do personally is That's part of my routine having the herbal teas before I get into bed, but if I'm doing an early shift and I know that I've got eight hours I make sure that I have eight hours and 40 minutes or eight and a half hours available on my time clock Usually it says that, oh, if you set your alarm for five o'clock in the morning at a certain time, you, you'll see that, oh, you will be getting up at, it can say nine hours. That's when I know that, okay, I've got like 15 minutes before I have to get into, into my bedroom, into the dark. And the importance of me blacking out my bedroom and sitting in the dark pretty much for 45 minutes really helps me to build up the natural melatonin in, in my, my body, my brain, to help me to sleep. Melatonin is very important for helping you sleep. You can take melatonin tablets. However, I really advise not to do this, only in cases of emergency, because otherwise your body can get, get almost immune to the, um, your body not producing melatonin naturally. And so in the future, you might have problems with producing melatonin naturally if you keep taking supplements. You should be trying these, um, everything I'm saying in this video, everything you read on the Sleep uh, Series article on, on the Roxiva website. Um, follow those rather than taking supplements to help you sleep. The herbal teas are fine because those are things that naturally, naturally can relax you. Um, however, melatonin is something that is naturally produced in our bodies, that our bodies create to help us get to sleep. So if you are taking supplement um, melatonin supplements which can't really always be found in a, a health food shops they're not always there you have to sometimes especially order them by your doctor or and on other sites they you can buy them but i recommend you only using it in times of emergency when you really need to sleep like you know get to sleep soon and that that must be it could be i don't know three or four times a year potentially um but don't rely on them. If you rely on them, then you will rely on them, basically. So, um, yeah, avoid avoid um, melatonin at all costs. Uh, taking them supplements only if you really, really have to. If you know that you just cannot get to sleep. Um, if you are an insomniac, then uh, please seek uh, medical help by a doctor or, or somebody that can assist you. Don't just listen to what I I say here or even the stuff on the articles, do your own research, uh, consult your doctor always, because we are not doctors, we are you know, just people, especially myself, who I've done the work on myself of being my own guinea pig and knowing what to take and what to do. Um, so, okay, so for me, when before I get into bed, um, I, I have my herbal tea, this could be 40 minutes before, 45 minutes before, half an hour before sometimes. Um, I brush my teeth, I get changed, I get into bed, but I sit upright, and I've got a, I've got a tripod with um, my my phone on there. And you might be thinking, hold on a minute, he's told us not to go on social media or avoid social media or to not look at our phones before we sleep. Well, the thing is, there's important things that you can do to help relax you before you sleep. Me, I like to 
watch something before I go to bed. Um, just to have like almost a a good story <laughs> to go to, a bedtime story, I guess. Something on Netflix, quite quite fun, interesting, could be romantic or funny, just to relax me. Something to distract, so I'm not on social media and being involved in conversations. I, I've turned the internet off. I'm in my blacked out bedroom. And on my tripod, I've got my phone. And on my phone, I have an app called Twilight. Um, this is available on Android. I think on uh, Apple Mac phones, you would find that there is another app. I can't remember the name of it. Or there's filter settings. So basically, I turn down my brightness to the lowest. So when I first put it on, I can't hardly see the screen at all, but my eyes do adjust. I have put the uh, twilight filter on, which changes everything to, takes all the blue peak out of there, all the blue light. And funnily enough, I put some red glasses on. So I'm sitting there in the dark with red glasses on, on my phone that's on the lowest setting. And I find that I'm in complete darkness and I'm watching a series. Sometimes I can hardly see what's going on, but at least I'm listening and I'm watching a little bit. And I find that that helps to relax me and build up some melatonin to help me sleep. The, the absence of uh, blue light and a lot of white light in the room and having red light only seems to really work for me. I find that's been a very powerful uh, tool to help me to, to sleep. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. I, I watch uh, an episode for half an hour, 45 minutes, and I've, I've, got, I've got two, two alarms um, on, on two different phones. One is my... Netflix and Disney Plus phone and that's in my bedroom with me but I put it far away from the bed after and it's off. I've set the alarm on that and then outside of my bedroom I put on another alarm on my normal phone which uh, is off all the time or throughout the night. So for me personally if I have a problem getting up early I know that if one of my phone suddenly dies or doesn't go off I have two alarm clocks basically that is away from my body and I can, and can get up if any problems. So um, yeah, install blue light filters on, on phones. If you don't have that luxury of having two phones or you have a laptop, then, then do the same and install um, on, on laptops. There's a, um, a software called f.lux, F. it's flux, f.lux, f.lux. I find that really amazing. It adjusts things naturally to you when you should be going to bed and getting up, it, it remembers. And it also takes out the blue peak when you're studying and is, is much better for, for your for your eyesight as well. Um, so also avoid stimulants throughout the day, such as coffee and caffeine, energy drinks. I don't drink energy drinks. I don't drink coffee, um, caffeine either. The only thing I have early in the morning is a seven mushroom blend, which is like uh, reishi, chaga, uh, shiitake, matake, um, cordyceps, um, I've forgotten the other ones now. Uh, it has a bunch of different uh, mushrooms in there uh, with some uh, cacao powder and and I mix that with some oat milk, some agave syrup, ginseng and guava, guana. guana. <laughs> so all those are like stimul stimulants but not caffeine. I have that in, in the very early morning and I, I wake up and I have that if I'm doing an early shift. It just keeps me warm wired for the day and I have that once and I'm fine. I can't take caffeine. I can but I become, I have the jitters and I'm not good to be around basically so I try to avoid co coffee caffeine unless I really need it again it's uh, it's one of the biggest drugs out there you know it's it's not good for you I will have it if I really need it and I am completely tired it's a lifesaver if I really need it but to be honest I don't have it and if I do it's a very small amount um, so yeah try and do all those you know keeping a blue light filter on your on your devices before you sleep if you really want to watch something before you go to bed then make sure you turn out lights and change your bulbs as well so in my bedroom I've changed my the, the lamps next to my bed um, to a more of an orange glow and you can get this there's different types of uh, LED lights out there now we have a lot of LED lights rather than bayonet lights um, especially if you want to be more eco-friendly uh, power saving you have the typical um, white blue light uh, that you see on, on modern cars as well. Uh, that's white, but has a bit of a bluish tint to it. That's not good for your eyesight, like especially for before going to bed. Um, or you have the the um, the warm white uh, LED bulbs, 
or, or standard bulbs, or you can get even darker ones, or even change it to an orange. Um, that's even better, rather than having a typical LED light. If you're reading at night as well, um, put, a put on a red light and, and read with uh, a red light, or put on some red glasses. Um, just experiment and see what works well with you, but the less light setting the better, your eyes do adjust. Even better is listen to a meditation or, or um, an audiobook before you sleep. Sometimes you might fall asleep with that, um, but give that a go. There's, there's many things that you, you can do. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much covered everything that, that I do personally myself. If you have any problems sleeping, then uh, go and read the four uh, articles on the Better Sleep series. I think there's a fifth one, which is, um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's on the Roxy website. They have a, an amazing information, also links to, um, I believe, some, uh, some, some scientific studies. But... All the information is out there on you to get better sleep and perhaps you haven't realized that you've got better sleep already. How to sleep deeper? I mean, everything comes down to the human component, the person. You know, if you are stressed out. Um, another thing that I sometimes do if I'm finding I'm a bit tense before going to bed, I have something called an S-hook, which is a self-massager. Even better, have a partner to do that for you or, you know, give each other a, a foot rub as you fall asleep. Or, or, or shoulders. Shoulders you seem to be the area that we tend to carry a lot of tension on, on our backs, on our shoulders, carrying the weight of the world. Um, so I have this S hook. It's shaped like an, like an S. It's quite big. And so I can turn it around and I can get some really big trigger points in the back of my, my shoulders and I can really release some tension that helps to relax me before I fall asleep. Sometimes I do that whilst having my, my phone with red, gla red glasses on and just releasing some tension. Um, it's important to do the things that you love, you know, if you're a sort of person that doesn't have Netflix or doesn't want to watch things before you fall asleep, you don't have to do that. Put on some music, do some drawing if you like, um, but try and keep things less active in your bedroom before you fall asleep. Your bedroom should be a time for renew, for rejuvenation, and sleep is very important to us. We need it in our lives and we need better quality sleep. Broken sleep isn't very good. If you are sleeping with other people, like well, another person, sorry, you know, a partner that you're next to, um, and you're trying these things, it's always important to communicate with them what you're doing. Otherwise, it can sometimes trigger that person to think like, oh, what are they doing? They've got a blindfold on, they've got headphones on, they are acting weird, <laughs> or they've just suddenly got this, um, this grounding sheet and I don't want to be grounded when I sleep. Um, it's important to communicate, you know, your partner doesn't have to share that or they might want to. They might want to adopt the same things that, that you do. Perhaps you both find it difficult to fall asleep. It's always important to to communicate in, in relationships. That's another, another subject on, on, on a past video you can watch. But um, regardless, uh, having better sleep is important for our cells to um, function. You know, without sleep, we tend to not function better at all and it can uh, lead to a num number of um, different factors of health and, and, and men mental problems. So regardless, always speak to your physician or doctor, um, always seek uh, counselling or, or help if you have problems sleeping. If any of this hasn't helped, then um, yeah, don't um, just contact professionals that can help you deeper because there may be an underlying problem that you are facing with and just remember that everyone sleeps in different ways there is no correct right or wrong way i'm very envious of people that i see i don't know sleeping around in public they just seem to just pass out when there's like a party on or there's a loud noise and like how's that person asleep i remember years ago i went to um, a university area and i went to visit a friend and uh, they were visiting um, their their brother in the campus went up there and um, they're all being loud I said I, he, should we be quiet because he he's he's asleep <laughs> and they were like oh no he's always like that he'll be gone for a few hours and I was like wow so some people have the amazing benefit to do that for me I'm a light sleeper so um, these practices that I do help me I'm just ultra sensitive unfortunately I wish I wasn't in that area but I guess if my house was on fire, then I'll know about it. <laughs> so anyway, moving on, 
uh, always do your research. Just remember that everyone sleeps differently. Everyone sleeps. Some people need more sleep. Others need less. Um, if you are sleeping less than seven and a half or eight hours sleep and you're finding that you want more sleep but you can't, it might just be that you don't need as much sleep as other people. And be grateful you can be doing more in your day. If you're not feeling tired, then there's a problem. Um, try and aim for seven and a half or eight and a half eight hours if you can always try and follow sleep cycles try and set your alarm uh, regardless if you're not working at all uh, this is the thing about um, depression and and being lethargic and not energy is that if we wake up um, for example we wake up naturally that's the best time to wake up if you wake up this is one big tip if you find that you are feeling being very tired and you've got 10 minutes before your alarm goes off and you fall asleep that is a bad thing to do because you are back in a sleep cycle you wake up in the middle of a sleep cycle or just starting and your brain can be kept in delta for a long time uh, the, the delta waves are still going you're, you're in deep delta and you're not going to be in a good mood you're going to be groggy so always try and wake up naturally if you can uh, wake up with the sunrise if that's possible make sure you get in quality uh, make sure of quality sunlight and darkness in, in your day and I'm sure you will have a better, um, more healthier way to sleep. So I hope all this has helped you. All this has taken me a number of months to um, to get to myself. Say the herbal teas, blacking out my bedroom, uh, sleeping positions, uh, weights on me like you know, pillows, um, sleeping with with regular, uh, going to bed with uh, in the darkness with red glasses on, watching to something on a very low light and relaxing before I sleep, giving myself a massage. All these little things have really helped me. But remember, just don't stress, you know. Whatever's on your mind can be dealt with the next day and you have been feeling much better. So always give yourself that respect to yourself, your self-love, and remember to have a good night's sleep. So until then, good night. Um, I'll speak to you another day, uh, or, or whenever in the day this is. Speak to you soon. And um, yeah, have a great one. Goodbye.